All right, it's time now to talk some football on the Sportsmax Zone. After three roller coaster seasons at Old Trafford in the English Premier League, it seems a Bundesliga homecoming is becoming more and more of a likelihood for Manchester United winger Jadon Sancho. Since the beginning of this January transfer window, the 23-year-old has been linked with a loan move to his former club Borussia Dortmund after a well-documented falling out with Manchester United manager Eric Ten Hag after the Dutchman cited that Sancho hasn't been training well which led to him being left out of the setup back in September after a defeat to Arsenal. On his uh, performance on the training, we didn't select him. No, you have to reach a level every day on Manchester United and we can make choices in the front line. Um, yeah, and so for this game he wasn't selected. Sancho would then take to social media platform X, formerly known as Twitter, to lash out against his coach's claims. Please don't believe everything you read. I will not allow people saying things that are completely untrue. I have conducted myself in training very well this week. I believe there are other reasons for this matter that I won't go into. I have been a scapegoat for a long time, which isn't fair. Well, Sancho would eventually delete the post from his page, but that wouldn't prevent Eric Ten Hag from banishing the Englishman from all first team activities until an apology has been made by the disgruntled winger. An apology that Sancho is yet to deliver. Now it seems that Sancho may be on his way out of Manchester and on his way back to the yellow wall that is BVB. Well, here to discuss this recent development is one of our football correspondents, Simon Evans. Good afternoon, Simon. Happy New Year. Good afternoon, Mariah. Happy New Year to you too. Yeah, just unfortunate that we're starting the year speaking about, I would say this is an unfortunate situation because Jaden Sancho, a player that has shown a lot of promise for Borussia Dortmund, I felt as if, you know, his inclusion into Manchester United would only help the team. But we see that, you know, this fallout has instead hurt the team. Yeah, it hasn't been helpful for anybody. I mean, look, it's been a difficult time at Manchester United overall for Jadon and Sancho. You know, he arrived when Solskjaer was, was, was manager and didn't really settle uh, into the team very easily then. It didn't work out great for him under Ragnik, who gave him a chance and, and put him in the, a more central position and asked him to do a lot of pressing and, and that kind of work. Um, but then it didn't really develop from there. And then uh, Ten Hag has come in, and as you've just documented, it, it's been a very difficult relationship, one that's just not been functional. So a loan move to Borussia Dortmund is now on the agenda. And, and to be honest, as long as Ten Hag's at Manchester United and Sancho isn't apologising to him, it makes complete sense for him to go somewhere else. Yeah, and speaking about making complete sense, I think, you know, Jadon Sancho not playing for Manchester United, despite being a part of the setup, if I'm to even say so, has been hurting the player. Because when I think about, of course, there's no stats for other teams to look at. His market value has, of course, decreased his playing time. So we really can't say if he is in form. Well, I'll have to say he's not in form because we have not seen him playing. So I think for Jaden Sancho, the footballer himself, it is beneficial to him, if not anyone, to be playing football for whichever club it is. Oh, absolutely. This can't carry on for him. And really, to go to the, the idea of going to the end of the season until May or June with this situation is just impossible for him. You know, let's not forget, he was a player who was very much part of Gareth Southgate's uh, England setup. There was a time when he was, he was one of the first choice strikers um, playing. Great performance in the Nations League once against Spain when England won away, where he looked like an exciting player for the for the future of English football. He did so well for Dortmund uh, in in Germany that 
people were vying for his signature. United, it was a real coup for them to get him. They spent a lot of money on him. And his career is just frittering away at the moment. So he, he, he desperately needs this move. And, and uh, you know, I hope for him as a player, it's a, it's a move that works out for him. He's going, if he goes back to Dortmund, it's somewhere familiar, where he knows, where the fans like him, where he should be able to thrive again. And then he can have a look at his options again in the summer. Yeah, and in his Dortmund stint, he had 137 games, he had 50 goals, he had 64 assists. And I think those stats were so mouth-watering that Manchester United could not help themselves. Do you see him with the current Borussia Dortmund setup right now fitting back in perfectly? Um, it's a difficult one uh, to, to know exactly where, where you know, the, the Dortmund would have to adjust things a little bit. But I think his, his natural position is, is wide on the right. And I think uh, if Dorman wants him back, that's where they're going to play him. Um, they've got two or three options in the number 10 position. And there's Marco Ruos and there's, there's uh, Gio Reyna there as well and, and other people. So I, I imagine him to play either wide on the right or wide on the left as an inverted uh, winger and, and get back to doing what he did well, which was be a direct winger who would cut in and go for goal or go wide and then deliver crosses for striker. Yeah, it's not a complicated one tactically where you play Jadon Sancho. It's about playing him and getting the most out of him. Just neither of the three managers he's worked under at Manchester United were able to do that. Yeah. Uh, Simon, how much stress is this story on manager Eric Ten Hag? Because they paid £73 million for him in 2021. And Ten Hag himself is having you know, some struggles with, with building this team into a consistently good unit. Yeah, I think it's, it, it's, it's not helped Ten Hag at all. I don't think it helps the, the team atmosphere when you have a player who everybody knows every day that they go to the training ground, he's training separately or he's with the youth team players. Um, I think it can be something that can di disturb the, the mood and the, and the atmosphere. And, it, you know, the way Ten Hag approached it, you know, there's been people who have been critical of that, both inside and outside of Old Trafford, who said there were different ways of handling this. You know, there, there, were, there are ways, if you have a talented player and it's not working somehow and there's been a breakdown in the discipline, if that's what the case is, because obviously Sancho denies that, you know, you have to manage that situation and bring them back into the fold sometime, uh, somehow. And, and he hasn't been able to do that, so that raises yet another question mark about Ten Hag at a time when there are many. Yeah, and the other aspect of this story, when it just broke, um, Simon, and you've got your pulse on these stories, there were, I, I thought at the time, um, contradicting stories about how much support he had from, let's say, teammates or people you know, within, within, within the setup. But it has been so protracted now that I think I think it, it does appear in the end that um, Ten Hag's position is, is more favoured than a, a, a reverse position. Yeah, I don't think Sancho is that level of player where he could his his refusal to cooperate would lead to the manager uh, being forced out as a result of it. I mean, you can see that with a Cristiano Ronaldo or a Messi or, or maybe even a Harry Kane. You know those those stature of players. As much money as they spent on him, and they did spend, you know, like you say, 70-odd million on, on him, um, he's still not bigger than the coach of that club. And, uh, you know, one of the other factors in all of this, of course, is if he goes on loans for six months, which is what is being reported, uh, will Eric Ten Hag be the manager of Manchester United when he finishes that loan spell? And if he comes back to Manchester United in the summer, does he come back to uh, a, a different manager who, who might have a different approach to him? Well, strong statement there by you, Simon, because it does appear as if you are open to the possibility of uh, Ten Hag's uh, role being, being at the moment tenuous. Well, I think it's tenuous in the sense that you know, Jim Ratcliffe and his team have come in. Um, they're, they are examining a lot of things. They're looking at bringing in uh, you know, new technical staff. There's talk of Dan Ashworth, who uh, was part of the England setup, was also at Brighton, now at Newcastle, uh, and other people coming in from the INEOS group to work on the football side and really overhauling the football operation. And if the performances on the field continue to be the way they are, I think it's just logical to think that they will look, at the very least, about whether... Ten Hag and what he's done so far at United in difficult circumstances with a different football operation than the one they're trying to put in place. But is he really the best man to take them forward? So I would expect that to be reviewed at the end of this season. I'd, I'd be surprised if uh, 
Ratcliffe and his team, David Brentsfield and so on, don't review that. Yeah, well, he's certainly gotten the support, Ten Hag, from, from that, that crowd up to this point. But the fact is, for a Manchester United fan, they have, fan, they have had so many managerial changes since Sir Alex Ferguson left that um, there's a part of a Man United fan that, that just just is tired of these changes and want some sort of steadiness in, in the managerial role. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And actually, United fans at Old Trafford, you know, over the years when I was attending games there regularly, uh, have been very patient with their managers. Not like a fans of, of, of other clubs you could mention. You know, they, they'd never turned against Mourinho. I never heard a chant for Mourinho out. They were very, very supportive to, to Solskjaer during times when the team weren't winning until right at the very end. Um, Ragnik, they didn't really warm to, but I don't recall there being, you know, massive protests against Ragnik. And, and, and they wanted Ten Hag to work out, you know, and, 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 and been reluctant to, to turn against him. Even so, I think, you know, if he put together a, a run of four or five wins, I think he'd have the support of the fans. And, you know, the people coming in, they don't want to come in and immediately start changing things uh, at that level. They'd like to see it succeed and, and be some signs there that they can start in the summer but if you're going to be in a position where you're bringing in new people above him and you're going to be investing money in the squad, it is logical to look at it and say, is this the right person to spend whatever the budget, and it'll be another astronomical budget for rebuilding the current squad, is he the right person to do that? So I think that's just a logical, it's not a case that trying to get rid of him or that they should get rid of him. It's a case, I think it'll be entirely logical for them to review that. And if they haven't done well this season, that's not going to help him. Right, and you know, Simon, speaking about wages, I'm also thinking about Borussia Dortmund and whether or not they can afford to pay the full wages for Jaden Sancho. Yeah, that's something they'll have to work out. It's not uncommon in these situations for um, the, the hosting club, the parent club, if you like, to contribute to the wages. Um, sometimes, you know, it can be 50-50 or variations of that. Um, but yeah, the money he's on at Manchester United will be a lot more than uh, I think anybody at Borussia Dortmund. So that will be something that they would have to look at and work at. And it could, it could yet be a stumbling point, one would imagine. Yeah, and one of the debates that I was listening to leading up, of course, to this transfer saga is that Jadon Sancho has not contributed enough for Manchester United. And as a matter of fact, many people feel as if, you know, he should go because he's a liability to the team and he hasn't contributed. But I feel, Simon, personally, that many people have not taken into consideration that this is a young boy, 23 years of age, who a lot was expected of joining a Manchester United setup that, of course, was in turmoil, really, really underperforming. And then he did not get the amount of minutes that he got at Borussia Dortmund before the fallout. What's your take on that debate? I think he was given a, a really good opportunity by Solskjaer. They used him a lot. They w really wanted it to... I mean, they brought him in. They wanted him to, to succeed. They wanted to, um, you know, see him grow into the team and knew that would take some time. And it just never really clicked. So then he started going to the bench there. And, and I think under Ten Hag, you know, he inherited a situation where Sancho wasn't an automatic starter. So Sancho, the onus was on Sancho in that situation to prove himself to Ten Hag and, and, and prove that he deserved to come into the team and should be a starter. That's not happened. What happened on the training ground, it's one person's word against another. So we, we don't know that. All we know that is that if a manager takes a stance where he has a first team player who's cost the club of money and he chooses not to use him, um, then something's obviously not right. How soon do you expect us to find out where Jaden Sancho really, really ends up? Yeah, these things can drag on a little bit. Uh, the January window's open. It could happen any time between now and the end of the month. But this is an early move from Dortmund. So you would think if United are open to it and they can find that financial uh, uh, compromise on, on the wages, then it could happen quite soon. All right. Well... That's a wrap there, Simon. We want to thank you so much for joining us. And we hope that there comes a, a time when this discussion between Sancho as well is wrapped up and we could get to see him back to, of course, enjoying the best of his football. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks very much. All the best. All right, Simon Evans there, our football correspondent. Let's take a quick break. We'll be right back.